If you want to truly succeed in life, then you have to fail first. A lot. The more, the better. If that sounds counterintuitive, it's because you're not looking at failure with the right perspective. You've been told all your life to learn from your mistakes in order to avoid them, but have you ever considered that you should be making those mistakes on purpose? If you can't wrap your head around that bombshell, don't worry, by the time we're done with this video, you'll have an entirely different outlook on the relationship between failure and success. So let's get started. Welcome to Alux. And speaking of inspiration, how do we get good ideas? A lot of people think ideas are these big moments of realization, like the world fell silent and light from the heavens came down and put the spotlight on you. Or like a giant light bulb appearing out of thin air with a little ding. But life is not an animated cartoon, right? And ideas don't just pop into your head like that, even if it might kind of feel that way. That's the point American author Stephen Johnson made on a 2010 TED Talk. He argued that ideas are not these eureka moments. We know you probably have a memory of standing under the shower when suddenly everything finally clicked. But can you really say that your idea just materialized out of nowhere? Mr. Johnson would disagree. You see, ideas are not isolated events. And that's a good thing because we can't all take a shower every time we need to have an idea. Ideas are networks of events. They're a combination of your knowledge and life experiences. That moment of epiphany? It's just the final drop of water in a filled cup. You just didn't know you were filling it this whole time. Take the invention of the GPS, for example. During the TED Talk, Johnson shared the amusing story of how it came to be. Back in early October of 1957, the Sputnik had just launched, and the science community was going nuts about it. As the news broke around the country, two young researchers at the John Hopkins Applied Physics Lab, William Geyer and George Wiffenbach, wondered if they could listen to the satellite as it orbited. This wasn't some grand experiment or proposition, it was mostly just curiosity. So they did. Geyer went with Wiffenbach to his office, and they started playing around until they managed to tune in to the signal the satellite emitted. This quickly evolved into them mapping out the position of the satellite with just some beeps. A few weeks later, their boss came in and asked them if they could reverse the process. Instead of figuring out the position of the satellite from the ground, could they use the satellite to find a position on the ground? And so the GPS was born. But we wouldn't know that until years later. They didn't set out to change the world, they were practically goofing around at first, just experimenting to see if something was possible. And that's where failure comes in. Nobody predicted the wheel. One of the greatest inventions of human history was the wheel. Back in Mesopotamia, circa 4200 BC, it just changed the game entirely. Can you imagine life before the wheel? Ugh, that's rough. Did you think that people just sat around waiting for ideas to come? Hell no, ain't nobody got time for that. They worked and they worked hard. They carried rocks and logs until eventually someone came along with the wheel. But that person probably didn't wake up one day and just make a wheel. That's not how it works. Most likely it came through a process of experimentation. They were trying to make the process of moving things around more efficient. For all we know, they tested out multiple ideas. Maybe in a parallel reality we got stuck with square wheels, we don't know. Would you say that they failed to invent the wheel because their previous ideas didn't work? No, it's those ideas that led them to their invention. You can't sit around waiting for an idea. All you're gonna do is rack up your water bill with long showers. You need to go out there and fail, repeatedly. But to do that, you first need to change your idea of failure. Redefining failure. When people think of failure, they imagine catastrophe, suffering, and tears. We have a very black and white approach to failure and success, but that's not how it works. It's not a coin flip between one and the other. Failure is a critical element of success. So the first step to using your failures to your advantage is changing your mindset about them. It's like American author Zig Ziglar said, failure is a detour, not a dead end street. It's like playing a game. 
you're not supposed to give up on your first try. How many times have you won a game in a single try? When you die or lose, you just go right back to playing, right? You try something different, maybe a new strategy. You need to redefine failure as experimentation. Success hardly ever happens in a vacuum or off a single moment. You must fail, try again, fail again, and so on. The more you try, the better your chances of succeeding become. Failure isn't some terrible outcome, it's just a natural part of the process. The only real failure comes when you stop trying or when you just can't continue playing the game. That's critical failure, because when you put down the game, that's when you lose. True game over. But if you keep trying, eventually you'll come up with a new angle or idea that cracks the whole thing wide open. That eureka moment? It's standing in the back of all of your previous attempts. To quote the founder and CEO of Creon Systems, Approve Doobie, The only thing that separates success from failure is a one last attempt. Try one more time and you'll get lucky. That's all there is. You try something and if it doesn't work, you pivot and try something else. Try, pivot, experiment, try some more. And as you do this, you'll accumulate experiences, knowledge, and that idea will slowly be taking form until finally it takes shape and eureka. That's why you should aim to fail or experiment as quickly and as early as possible. The more you do it now, the sooner you'll get to where you want to be. But to really make the most out of failure, you have to share it. Taking failure to the next level. Adaptation is the true key to long-term success, and you only learn to adapt when you're forced to think about other possibilities, to see other angles. There's an acronym that really nails down what we're trying to say here. Frequent adaptation inspires learning, or fail. If you're the type to just move on after winning, then you're not really learning much from the experience, are you? The truly successful people challenge themselves to change the standards of their industries and find ways to improve the world we know or introduce new perspectives. For entrepreneurs like Jordan O'Neill and Jonathan Williams, co-founder of Failure Lab, each failure is a lesson. Their event encourages people to share their experiences with failure, be it personal or professional, so you can learn from it. And there's a a lot of value in pooling together your failures with those on your team. That's something the famous YouTuber MrBeast once mentioned as a mistake YouTubers commonly make. Not sharing their failures. Think about it. If you have three friends and you all made an experiment and fail 100 times, that's 300 experiments. That's a lot of data to learn from. However, when you go it alone, you only have your own experiences to draw from, and succeeding requires a lot of failure. You need to try again and again. People make the mistake of looking at the rich and powerful and focusing on a single moment of their success, but they forget about how they got there. Let me give you a hint. Most of them failed a lot. Think about Thomas Edison and the invention of the light bulb. As an inventor, Edison tried hundreds of different approaches and materials for his version of the light bulb. He didn't see those unsuccessful attempts as failures, but merely as materials that didn't work. He continued testing until he made a version that finally broke through. He was asked by a reporter, how did it feel to fail 1,000 times? To which he replied, I didn't fail 1,000 times. The light bulb was an invention with 1,000 steps. Michael Jordan had a similar philosophy. Jordan has a famous quote about failure. He said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. On 26 occasions, I've been entrusted to make the game-winning shot and I missed. I have failed over and over again in my life and that is why I succeed. Think about Henry Ford's example. Can you imagine bankrupting two companies and still trying to make it in the business world? Because that's exactly what Henry Ford did. He left his long-term job to start an automobile company with $150,000 in investor money. That was back in the early 1900s. He went bankrupt in less than two years. He tried once more and he failed again. He lost all of the money of his investors twice in less than five years. And yet in 1903, he 
re-established the Ford Motor Company. You know how they say that the third time's a charm? Well, it proved to be true for Ford. Five years later and he released the Model T. And the rest, as they say, is history. But they didn't just fail and move on to the next thing. They understood that there were lessons to learn in their failures. The only real failure would be stopping. They didn't stop until they succeeded, no matter how many times it took. To them, they didn't fail. They experimented. They redefined their failure, and that is why they succeeded. Ultimately, what you need to remember is something we've already said. Ideas are not built in a vacuum, and they are not a single moment of inspiration. They're the sum of multiple tries, or failing again and again. They come from sharing your experiences with others. As you do this, that perfect idea will slowly take form in the background. That's why you can't just stop after one quote-unquote failure. You have to keep trying a lot and quickly. The more you do, the sooner that idea will come. And hey, we know that trying like that isn't always easy. So if you're feeling down from a recent failure, then maybe you should listen to the comedy folk duo Garfunkel and Oates. They made a song dedicated to those that fail called Such a Loser. They spared no pity, focusing on how losers deserve their own cheering for trying and failing. As the song says, trying is hard, that's why people don't do it. Losing is hard, they can't make it through it but not you. And Alexers, that's a wrap for today. But before we go, you know we have a bonus waiting for you. Everyone wants to build the next Facebook or TikTok, the new app or software that will revolutionize the world. But nobody stops to think about the failures it took to get there. How would you know when you have succeeded? When do you know that you've tried enough? Well, when people adopt the brand, when they listen to what you have to say and follow with your journey, that's when you found success. And that's it from us today, Aluxers. We'd love to hear your opinion on failure and its relationship with success. So please share your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you know someone that could really use this video, be a pal and pass it around. After all, sharing is caring.